Good afternoon, students. Am I audible? Okay, so today we are going to start our new chapter or you can say our second unit is our design of kernel or you can say design of channel, okay. So here, here, we have two types of channel. One is your erodible and one is non-erodible, okay. You can see here types of channel to be designed we have two types one is erodible or mobile boundary channel okay one is non-erodible or rigid boundary channel that means suppose we need to construct a canal okay a irrigation canal of trapezoidal channel okay then first we have to do the artwork okay and we okay so you see this is what is made up of art okay so this is your mobile boundary channel or erodible channel that means when there is a flow of water there must uh, may be some erosion because of the velocity of water so that is why it is called erodible or mobile boundary okay so if we do or if you lay down some brick here if you lay down some brick okay or you can say brickwork if we lay down some brick and then we do cluster okay then okay okay so then this channel becomes not erodible and rigid boundary now this boundary of the channel is rigid okay so this is called line channel once you do brick work or you do some kind use some kind of motor also if you fix the boundary of the channel that is called your line channel okay or if you don't do anything then it is called mobile boundary channel or non-erodible or online channel okay or channel okay so here we have different methods for both your line and unlined canal or you can see erodible and non-erodible canal so if you see from your uh, exam point of view or if you see for any competitive exam is your mobile boundary channel or erodible channel is most important okay? you can find most of the questions related to your canal design is from erodible or mobile boundary channel okay that is your number two okay when because we have soil erosion when it is a mobile boundary okay then uh, if there is if it is not line there may be some growth of small small plants in the sides which obstructs your velocity okay then uh, the water is also carrying some amount of silt and in due course of time it's deposited in the bottom of the channel okay so then it is very difficult to remove those those silt deposited at the bottom of the channel first second it reduces the capacity of the channel okay so that is why there is some 
disadvantages also for mobile boundary channel and some advantages also okay so those things you are going to study in your irrigation subject okay here we are going to study only how to design this channel or how to design this mo mobile boundary channel or you can say erodible boundary channel okay so we will discuss both but first we will discuss about erodible or mobile boundary channel okay So for irreducible boundary channel, your first method is Kennedy's seal theory. Okay. Your first method is Kennedy's silt theory. Okay. So those things we don't need to discuss because when you go to the steps, we are going to discuss these things again. Okay. The so next topic you write steps required in design by Kennedy's theory. Or you can write like this steps required to design a mobile boundary channel by Kennedy's theory. Okay. So this method is basically a trial and error method. Okay. This method is basically a trial and error method. So first step number one. Okay, uh, my suggestion is to you write down the steps. Okay, because we are going to solve numericals, then you have to follow the steps carefully. Okay. So before this uh, step one. We should know the discharge for this particular theory. For this particular theory, we need discharge. Discharge should be known. Bed slope. Definitely, when you construct a channel, that bed slope is known. It depends on the topography of the land. Okay. So decided by topography, it's written here. Okay. Then CVR. CVR is nothing but critical velocity ratio. Okay. This should be known, and then this cutters and k should be known. So don't worry when you go for a numerical, these things is going to provide you. Okay. Now what we have to do when we design a channel, when we design a channel, that means we are going to find out the parameter. One is the maximum depth of the channel. Okay. At maximum depth of the channel and one is width of the channel if it is a rectangular channel so these are the two parameters we need to construct a channel okay before constructing a channel we need what will be the depth of that particular channel and what will be the width of that particular channel and if it is a trapezoidal width also we need it and then we also need the maximum depth of water of that particular channel including the side slope okay including the side slope so these are the parameters we required for constructing construction of a channel so when we design our aim is to find out what will be the maximum depth of that particular channel our aim is to find out what will be the maximum depth of the channel what will be the width of the channel and what will be the side slope 
for a trapezoidal channel okay with known discharge known bed slope critical velocity ratio and cutters nk okay So step number one, it's a trial and error method. So first, we have we have to assume a depth of flow y. Okay, suppose y is equal to two meter. It's just an assumption. Okay, first we have to assume a value for y. Okay, it's up to you. You can as assume one meter also, two meter also, three meter also. It's up to you. Okay then you have to find out the velocity by using this equation okay. is it visible you have to use this equation okay to find out the velocity so first step is to assume a depth of flow y okay second then you have to find out the velocity by using this equation 0 0.55 multiplied by m suffix r m suffix r is nothing but your critical velocity ratio okay multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 okay this is kind of this theory okay first you have to assume a depth of flow then you have to find out the velocity with an expression is v equal to 0 0.55 multiplied by critical velocity ratio mr and multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 okay this y is nothing but your assumed depth okay this y is nothing but your assumed depth okay then we come to the third step okay so we got y value we got velocity discharge is known to us so we are going to find out area in the next step that is nothing but discharge by velocity so discharge is already known for this is also called as design discharge for what discharge maximum discharge we are going to design that particular channel so this value is nothing but your design discharge okay so that discharge divided by velocity what we have calculated by using this equation you will get find out the area cross-sectional area okay so this is the third step first step is you have to assume a depth of flow second step is to find out the velocity using equation 0 0.55 multiplied by critical velocity ratio multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 okay third step is to find out the area area is equal to discharge divided by velocity okay so next step number four okay so generally we consider trapezoidal channel okay we consider trapezoidal channel so if z value is not known if z value is not known or given assume z is equal to assume z is equal to 0 0.5 comma 1 comma 1.5 or maximum is 2 okay comma 2 okay so if for a trapezoidal channel if z value is not given then we can assume a value of z in between 0.5 to 2 okay depending on the types of soil depending on the types of soil as you can see here for loose soil z value will be more okay so if z value is not known we can assume any value between 0 to 0 0.5 to 2 
with respect to our types of soil in that particular locations okay so for loose soil your z value will be more and vice versa okay so you write down this step number four You write down this step number four. over then we go to step number five then we move on to the next step that is our step number five so this is nothing but your area equation of a trapezoidal channel okay that we have already discussed in many times okay this is nothing but your area equation of a trapezoidal And this is your weighted perimeter. Okay. So in that area equation, if you consider a trapezoidal channel, okay, this is your width of the channel. This is definitely Y. This is Z. 1 is to z so this will be your z y and this will be your z y okay so sum of the parallel sides so this will be twice z b plus 2 z this is b okay b plus 2 z b plus twice z y divided by 2 sum of the parallel sides sorry plus b okay sum of the parallel sides okay b is the bottom of the channel and your top width is nothing but your b plus twice z y okay top top width is equal to top width okay so if you add this two divided by two multiplied by your vertical distance that is your y okay so if you further simplify you will get this equation that b plus z y divided by sorry multiplied by y because this is b plus twice z and this is also b so it will be 2 here then we will bring it out to it will be cancelled out so it will be left out with this b plus z y multiplied by y okay so this is the equation for trapezoidal area and this is your parameter weighted parameter okay so if you see in that area equation that area we have already calculated in equation uh, sorry step number three okay so in step number three we have already determined what will be the cross-sectional area for that assumed depth okay so in that equation area equation 
your area is known z if it is known it's okay if it is not known then we are going to assume some value between 0.5 to 2 depending on the types of soil okay the next is y y we have already assumed in the first step so from this equation we can directly find out the v value okay so once you calculated the v value you substitute in the weighted perimeter equation and you can find out the p value also okay so from the area equation you substitute all the parameters and find out the width of the channel that is your bottom width of the channel b capital b okay once you calculated capital b you substitute in the weighted perimeter equation and find out the weighted perimeter okay and find out the weighted perimeter okay so in first step we are going to assume a depth of flow then in second step we find out the velocity using the equation 0 0.55 multiplied by critical velocity ratio multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 then we find out the area then normally we consider trapezoidal channel if the side slope is given it's okay if it is not given then or it's not known then we are going to assume any value between 0.5 to 2 depending on the types of soil okay then in the fifth step we are going to find out the area sorry uh, we are going to use the equation of area and find out the width of the channel that is the bottom width of the channel okay and then we find out the weighted perimeter of the particular channel okay so after completing fifth step we will move on to the next step that is our six 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 nothing but we have to find out the hydraulic mean depth that is area by weighted perimeter that we all know okay area we have already calculated weighted perimeter we have calculated in a previous step so we will substitute here and we will find out the r value okay okay then step number seven step number seven you have to again find out the velocity by using this equation you kindly write down this equation okay 23 plus 0 0.00155 divided by sb plus 1 by nk divided by 1 plus 23 plus 0 0.0015 sb nk root over r multiplied by root over r into sb okay you write down the expression
power okay. you see in first step we are going to assume a depth of flow then again we are going to find out the velocity by using this equation that is your 0 0.55 multiplied by critical velocity ratio multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 okay then we find out the area then we are going to assume z value then in fifth step we are going to find out the width of the channel and weighted perimeter okay then sixth we are going to find out the hydraulic mean depth or hydraulic radius by a by b then in seventh equation we are going to find out the velocity by using this equation that is your 5.18 equation number 5.18 using this equation we are going to find out again velocity okay see in step number two we have already calculated velocity and in step number seven again we are calculating velocity okay next is step number eight okay then we move on to step number eight and what we want to do in step number eight if the velocity obtained in step number two that is in step number two we have already calculated the velocity by using this equation 0 0.55 multiplied by mr multiplied by y to the power 0 0.64 okay so in step number two we have calculated the velocity using this equation okay in step number seven again we have calculated velocity with that equation now we have to check this velocity and velocity you have calculated in step number seven is equal or not okay so what is written here if the velocity obtained in step number two is not equal to velocity in step number seven then assume second try see whatever the velocity we have calculated in step number two and whatever the velocity we have calculated in step number seven if it is same then we need not to do further okay that it means that our assumed depth of flow is our required depth okay so for that particular depth we are going to construct or design that particular channel okay if your velocity at step 2 and velocity at step 7 is same if not then we have to go for a second trial of y that is depth of flow so we have to assume another depth of flow and you have to repeat till this step okay understood we, first we have assumed a depth of flow then we have calculated velocity then we have calculated area then we assumed a z value okay then we uh, calculated width of the channel then as at, at the same step we have calculated our weighted perimeter then we have calculated r then again we are going to calculate velocity then whatever the velocity we have calculated at step number two if it is same at step number seven then we are going to stop if it is not same then we have to go for a second trial or we are we have to assume another depth of flow and we have to proceed all these steps till step number eight or till we don't get a similar velocity okay this will be going on till we are getting a similar velocity in both the steps okay so here it is written repeat steps two to eight until two velocities are almost equal okay so you kindly write down the step number eight okay so it is nothing but if the velocity obtained in step two is not equal to velocity in step seven assume second trial value of y repeat steps 2 to 8 means from step 2 to step 8 until two velocities are almost equal
Okay, before we proceed, I really want to tell you that this type of numericals or this type of problems we don't do manually, okay? But uh, here in your syllabus is there, so you should know what is the steps. Definitely, manually it's not possible, okay? So during exam also, you have to select one or two velocities. If it is coming up the same, oh, sorry, uh, you have to select one or two depth of flow or one or two trial. If it is coming same, then it's uh, well and fine. If it is not coming, then you, you can left over there, okay? Because these things, it is not possible to do manually. We use some computer or numerical methods, okay? To solve such kind of problem, okay? In general, we use MATLAB software to solve such theory, okay? Sub uh, because uh, each and every trial, you cannot uh, assume a value and that velocity and it's equal to that velocity, okay? But that computer can, he, he can run number of trials and he will directly give you that at what y this velocity will be same, okay? So those things easily can be done in MATLAB software. Okay. Over step number eight. Okay. So then we move on to step number nine. Okay. So till step number eight, we are going to fix our y value what will be the depth of the channel what will be the depth of channel okay by the trial and error method we are going to fix the y value what will be the ultimate y or depth of the channel maximum depth of channel okay in step number eight then what you do find in step number nine find actual b and actual a so whatever the area and which we have calculated is related to your first trial for a particular depth because we are going to repeat the trial and for that particular y what will be the area we have to find out finally okay area and width of the channel the process is same okay you use the area equation So once you both the velocity is same, then you are also getting the velocity. So you can find out the area with this equation and then you substitute here and you can find out the width of the channel that is V width of the channel. Okay. From the last trial. Okay. Then we have to provide a value called FB. FB is nothing but your free board. Free board. So why we need to provide free board? Because suppose see, see this research is known to us. Okay. So we are going to design this channel for that particular discharge. Okay. Then we are not going to take a risk because if a discharge coming greater than this Q, then it will be overflow. Okay. Then it will be overflow from the channel. Okay. Okay. Though we are going to take the maximum discharge or we are going to design that channel for the maximum discharge, but still in worst case, if a discharge come or release in that particular channel, which is more than that discharge we have considered during the design, then there will be an overflow. So what we do, whatever the channel we are going to design, we are giving some extra to that particular channel this is this is for discharge q if some extra discharge is also coming then it shouldn't be overflow okay so, so this part is nothing but your free board okay this part is nothing but your free board so how much you are going to provide this thing 
is if your research or whatever research we have considered for designing the channel it is less than 10 meter cube per second then we are going to provide 0.6 meter so this this length will be this length will be 0.6 meter okay that is y okay this nothing but before it is y then after this we are going to add y plus 0.6 okay that will be your new y after providing free boot this is your free boot okay this this is the y what we have designed for q if in a worst case if a research coming more than q then it shouldn't overflow to avoid that situation we are going to provide extra that is called free board okay how much we are going to provide if it is less than if this discharge if this charge is less than 10 meter cube per second we will provide 0 0.6 if it is greater than 0 0.75 sorry if it is greater than 10 meter cube per second we are going to provide 0 0.75 or you can say more than 0 0.75 okay so this is our last step okay tenth step we have to provide free board or sometime we also consider 25 percent of the y as a free board okay but uh, in this particular theory that Kennedy's what Kennedy's given that we provide 0 0.6 meter when the surge is less than 10 meter cube per second and when it's greater than 10 meter cube per second we provide greater than 0 0.75 or you can also provide 0 0.75 So this, uh, yeah, this is the your Kennedy's theory to design a mobile boundary channel or you can say erodible channel. If you have any doubts, then you can uh, ask me or you can move on to a numerical related to this. Our next topic is drawbacks and limitations of Kennedy's theory. So there is nothing to explain. Okay, so you can directly. I will give you this uh, PDF. You can directly write down from here. Okay, we have ten points, which is your limitations. By simply reading, you can understand.
so we are going to end this uh it's uh, about to end this meeting okay so in the next we will take five minutes break and then we'll start the next class and then we will solve a numerical related to our Kennedy's theory okay so we, there will be just a uh, five minutes break okay then again we start with this uh, numerical of Kennedy's theory